everybody, and welcome to Poland Daily Travel. Thank you for watching. You're looking good. Here I am sitting with Nicholas Richardson, and we've been trying to, over the last few episodes, come to grips and uh, find some kind of understanding of what it means to, what concentration camps uh, relationship they have with uh, tourism. Is it possible? Is it, uh, how do you approach this? Because, you know, I'll start off by saying this. I have a friend whose mother and father used to come to Poland on a regular basis, almost every year, American friend, almost every year at least once, and they would always go. They had seen, to a concentration camp, they'd seen all of them that, that was possible, or gone to the sites, you know. Which one is it this time? Is it Auschwitz? Is it uh, uh, is it uh, uh, auschwitz bergenau Is it uh, Majdanek? Is it, you know, which one is it? Sobibor. What, where are we going to, to go this time? And I always found it very curious. The, that is an odd uh, approach to life. They're so very they're... serious people. But and if uh, there, you have a genuine historical interest, that's something. But yeah. it, it's where you draw the line, which is a difficult line between, as you said earlier, voyeurism and actually genuinely trying to, you know, experience. As I said on a previous... Yeah, exactly, program, and yeah. I think this is very difficult. Um, I found that with war reporting, too, you have to be careful that you're not voyeuristic, yes, that I, you have a reason. It's like people, I had some, uh, 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 I know someone who said, oh, I, I want to go to the Middle East and I want to go to the Bekaa uh, Valley and I want to go to here and there. I, wanna, I said, why? It's dangerous. And he's just, just married with his wife he wants together. I said, why are you doing that? That's dangerous. It's not macho. No, no. Don't go some, to a dangerous place unless you have a reason. I went to these places because I was being paid to write about them because that's a, a, a job that I've had for 30 years, you know, and uh, uh, off and on. And I've been to a lot of war zones, but not as a voyeur. I mean, there is an excitement to it, but it's, uh, you're a professional going there and you're gonna be writing about it and you have a technique that you employ interviewing and you, it's not your first time, uh, well, course. your first time no, is always well, more, is well, you're more difficult. There, you're going there for a particular purpose. You're going for a purpose. And I, and I think also there's something, different. even if we might, you know, draw the analogy, oh, well, people visit the, for example, where you're from, visit the, Losing my the, the Civil War um, yeah. uh, um, sites, you know, the battlefields. Yeah. But I think even in a battle, you know, that's a bit different because there was, a battle was open conflict between two armies, so there was a sort of, there was something honourable about the whole thing. Well, there's something agreed. Y Yes. I don't know if it was honourable, but, but it was but, agreed. But, but, but whereas a concentration camp, there's nothing, on, there was no honourable end to any of this. Well, there was no just, agreement. Yes, yeah, this was just evil. No, you can look at it this way. You're a contracts uh, specialist uh, in, in, in various incarnations of your life. And yes. uh, you trained as a lawyer. So um, uh, there is a contract between the opposition in a war that you're going to fight each other. Uh, and you have uh, various, uh, you, you even come, if you can imagine it, the Geneva Convention, well, for example, course, yeah, you exactly. teach pe treat people a certain way, you can't use certain, you can't use exactly. gas, there's a lot of things. Um, th there are rules in war, That's unbelievable, good there point. are rules. Okay, there are no rules, uh, and there's it, no contract. And that, indeed, that's actually one, in of, the, the that's one of the points scene. about surviving. You know, people often say you can survive anything, however horrific, when you work out what the rules are, you can sort of know that there'll be predictable ends to certain things. The concentration camp, I think one of the, one of the uh, psychological difficulties with them was there were actually no rules, and there was the sheer random nature of the violence. Even was, in, the, even in yeah. the camps where, even in the camps which were not extermination camps, the sheer randomness of the fact but you the whole could, thing is random because what it, have you done wrong? Nothing. Well, exactly. That's how we, you're alive? Exactly. But the oh, whole wait, point, wait, but wait. even within the camp... Why am I arrested? But you're it, alive? But even within the camp system, there was <laughs> a know. certain randomness to whether you survived or not, even if you tried to follow sure. the, the weird rules that they may have had. Yeah. And this comes out in the... In the, you know, if you read the, the, the book about Piletsky in his time in Auschwitz, you know. Piletsky, the amazing yeah, story. I mean, but yeah. even his survival. Piletsky, let's just yeah, re recap. Yes, that he, he, was went a, he was a. To he was, yes, he was a, 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 a Polish army officer who volunteered yeah. to go to Auschwitz to find out what was going on to get information to the outside world about the camp. While he was there, he organised a camp resistance. That's real tourism. Yeah, well, that's real travel. <laughs> that is real travel. Yes, a, and he went. But, 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 I, I, wait, but because it's important to to remark upon not only the intellectual courage 
but the physical bravery to of go course. there and leave. Exactly. I mean, he was lucky he was able to escape. He went there, got himself captured with the goal of escaping. Yes. Which is extraordinary. It is, and, uh, and it's even more and extraordinary. people complain nowadays that they don't have the right new phone. Exactly, and he was there, <laughs> and he was you know. there, though, for over two years. And yeah. even if you read the book, his survival at Auschwitz, there were a number of occasions when he was pure luck that he survived at all. Sure. Because he was ill at a time when the Germans decided that ill people would be taken out and executed, even in Auschwitz. I mean, you know, there were, there were, and he, or he had pneumonia, and they, the Germans decided they weren't going to actually keep people alive who had pneumonia, but somebody else in the, in the hospital was able to persuade the Germans, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the whole story is just a remarkable story of courage and, and good luck. Uh, and he did finally escape. So is visiting... It depends... OK, here's I what... I think it depends on your motive. It's motion, your intention. It's your intention. If you're going there, as we say, yeah. said earlier, because you're to, to remember or to pay tribute to, you know, a member of your family who might have been had the misfortune to be there, well, that's fine. You're like you would visit a graveyard, you're going in a state of reverence. Or out of empathy. Yes. Or if you're going there because you just want to try better to understand the history and you're going yeah. there also out of res with respect, because if you want to learn the history, you want to learn the facts, so you're going there to learn for yourself. If you're going there fine. to put it on, because it's on your bucket list uh, yeah, I think of that, selfie shots... I think that's, that's, that's the wrong idea. Then you need to and be... I, and uh, I know it's very difficult. You know, I, I don't you know, know how the people who run these... You need a good talking to. The people who run these, actually, how they... Uh, uh, you've been, but how they're able to try to make sure that the people who do visit as tourists behave in a, in, a, in a respectable fashion. Well, they've had to do. They didn't used to have to do that, but since the invention of the selfie, and this whole and the whole uh, cult of uh, self-promotion for for no achievement uh, that social media gives us, then you find that that people become quite disruptive and because and, they and, forget. Yeah. And now if you look at the aerial shots yeah. of it, you can see sort of the Auschwitz camp, there's a new sort of visitor centre and coach park, and there's probably a restaurant or a coffee shop as well, and the idea you'd sit here happily drinking your cup of coffee, having you know, spent a few hours walking around a concentration camp, is, is I just find very strange. Yeah, it, it, so it's not a tourist attraction, it's a place... place yeah, I think it should be treated as a place... we say place of pilgrimage? Yes, I was going to say pilgrimage. You do, you have yeah, the I, same I, I, That okay. was the thought I, I had, yeah. the word I was... I was thinking of pilgrimage. You know, if you yeah. if you're if you're one of the people who's actually still alive today, and you just want to go back to maybe give thanks that you're still alive all these years like later, like my South and, African, and, yeah, yeah or, to, or to remember yeah. members of your family or people you knew who who, who met their their, their death, then that, that's fine. If you're going there because you're genuinely interested in the history, you just want to try to understand this you know, this major um, point part of the uh, Second World War and, and of the of the twentieth century. That's fine. I think if you're just going there because, oh well, it, it, we could go to the museum or we could go and watch the dolphins swimming or something. Well, let's go to Auschwitz and take a few snaps for our holiday album. I think that's your. I you're, hope people aren't doing that. No, I don't. Well, maybe I maybe they're hope not. They have but, more of a sense of reverence and that. Well, this, I hope they do as well. But you know, like everything else, selfie is, stuff is just exactly. uh, uh, is just a cultural problem. Uh, you know, and I don't know to what extent at Auschwitz they they, yeah. they have to. Um, spend time sort of preserving it. I mean, that's also, I always find with these historical things, it's always, you know, you know, uh, what, what, why would you preserve? Or why would you just let it fade away, ultimately, which is probably what is the best thing that should happen to it. OK, because so we, we're just to wrap up, we've come to, I've got to stop you there, but okay. we've come to a conclusion that uh, going to these places is not a tourist thing. It should be as a, as a pilgrimage and with reverence. Yes, as a pilgrimage, and, to pay respect, or, to, pay respect yeah. or to learn or to understand, not okay. just as a, as a souvenir, a thing to tick off on your list of tourist attractions you but have you seen do. in Poland. Yeah. That would be my view. Thank you for summing well, up. You. Nicholas, it's good seeing you. And thank you uh, for having me. Thank you for watching. You're, you're always <laughs> welcome, Nicholas. Thank you for watching, uh, everybody. And uh, may I say, you are looking good. <laughs>